Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome back to Tennis Manager 2023. This is episode number two. It's almost like an episode 1.1, but not quite, because I almost pulled the plug to try to reset as I read some of the descriptions. Uh, you can hover over certain key areas like, say, player management, and it's going to show you what player management does in a more specific way than what we saw in the past. So again, if we look at player management, ability to manage players, ability to measure the initial relationship level between a staff manager and a player and the speed with which a relationship evolves, ability to provide care, communication, other things. And as you look into the infrastructure and this revenue is impacted by, it's not base like it used to be. It's evolved this year. And of course I'm now learning this the hard way and thought, well, gosh, maybe I've made a mistake because what did I do in the first episode? I fired most of my staff to cut down on costs so that we could actually make a profit because we weren't gonna be making a profit. But apparently the staff that I had was increasing our revenue. And when I do look at finances, for example, uh, one clear place for you that you can get a good look at finances. If we look at the medical center here, revenues are impacted by the medical staff. The better and larger your medical staff is, the more income it will generate when providing services to patients outside the academy, meaning when they're not busy supporting your athletes, they're earning a living in a normal manner with real life patients and those real life patients provide an income piece. Now, based on what we have, we have almost nothing. We have a physical therapy room and a psychology department that bring in 6.7K and 6.7K, except, keyword, max. And this is the big difference from before. Now it's about a multitude of things and it's not just an automatic which I, I like it was all automatic last year I think now well it varies so that 13.4 K that we could potentially have earned the medical center only earned 8 K last month it came in five and a half K shy of what it could have earned and we do have a staff member there but that staff member how much are they saving? How much are we losing? I don't know without trial and error. I don't know without doing something else to figure out whether it's useful for us to fire them or whether it's useful to hang on. And of course, there is no single answer to that because it also partially depends on the levels of the staff members. It's not just on or off. It's not just you have the staff member or you don't have the staff member and you're making this amount or you're making this amount. Their quality, along with a number of other variables, feed into it. So for a the hard, hard start that we have, have I sabotaged us? Am I taking away our possible income and turning us into a negative balance sum that's a losing battle? Because we can't make upgrades without money. If we have a negative balance, we're not going to make money. I mean, you have to have a positive balance no matter how small. So what what happens? <laughs> Something's got to give. Do we go bankrupt first? Do we get injections from the board to save us and keep us afloat? Do we survive long enough for Clarice to start winning tournaments and playing higher level tournaments with bigger prize winnings and the prize winnings offset. I mean, if, if it's negative 12 K a month, she's not going to offset that anytime soon. And we're going to be at a huge amount of debt in a short period of time. So that's, that's no good. I'm stuck with a tricky situation where I'm kind of wanting to pull an experiment and already set up the first tutorial in tennis manager for the year after running said experiment. This is not the place to run that said experiment, and yet here I am kind of caught in the crosswinds on this one. I think I will be coming out with a tutorial on this quite soon. Speaking of, if you like the content here, if you want to see more of Tennis Manager, please take a, a moment, drop down below, click that like button, leave that comment to help with the algorithm. The key is the first three episodes, and as you have probably seen by now, 
this is a small channel. This is not a large YouTube channel. So I do need every bit of help that that algorithm can provide. But let's go ahead and get to what action I think we can proceed with, which is going even deeper into the problematic area of, I at least have one direct comparison here in a medical center that if I fire our physio, who is the one that works in that medical center, we will save on the salary. But how much do we lose to this income base? How much smaller does it get? Does it get, do we lose more than the salary or less than the salary? Meaning we get closer to being profitable or we get further from being profitable. And likewise, these other areas all do something similar and we already fired those staff members and it feels like we lost more than we gained, but I didn't give it a month to even have a comparison to know. Ouch on that part, because I was unaware. Hence that, do I need to restart already? Anyway, now I'm starting to go in circles. Let's, let's proceed. Uh, but that first test that we're gonna run is I am gonna fire our physio. She helps with Clarice and her recovery, but we've got to we got to start breaking even or better, and, I, and at least this will give us a comparison going forward. The expenses side now that we've turned the month into February, the infrastructure remained exactly the same in terms of cost. Staff costs did come down with firing the last two members of staff, including our one trainer that we had and our losses were not as bad but that doesn't mean anything good for us as it was still over 10k we still lost 11k for the month because on the earning side well we still got our 8k for the medical center so apparently a level one basic physio is not earning us anything extra it's bare minimum without them we still earned that bare minimum. But what about the other facilities? I don't know. I do not know where that all put us. It's really, really hard to say, but we are very much taking losses at roughly 10K a month as is. There's no additional staff to let go. So that portion of the experiment is, well, we're gonna have to tough it out a little bit and I will eventually go back and make comparisons kind of one by one with a trial run to find out where we're at with that. For now, let's see if we can survive. Our problem is I can't hire anyone new if I wanted to because we have a negative balance. We can't afford any signing bonuses unless we can get somebody signed without any signing bonus. And if we can, they're gonna be bare minimum and they're certainly not gonna be earning much money. We might earn a hundred bucks a tournament type thing. And that's not gonna help us out with the 10K that we need. They did four tournaments in four weeks that earned $400 for us. That's not much of a dent on 10K. As we go to enter our second tournament of the career of Clarice, she's gained about half a point across the board in all categories thus far, meaning half of her attributes have leveled up once at this stage, which is, you know, that's good progress. That's certainly good progress, and it's gonna make her better. It could make her more of a lock to get towards quarterfinals and maybe compete for semifinals. But again, she is only earning us about 200 a tournament as of right now. So we're a long ways off from that little bit better translating into significant winnings. And in this tournament, she doesn't even get out of the first round. It's 2-6, it's 4-6, it's a loss. It's kind of an ugly one. Eight double faults, 25 winners to 36, 16. That's 16 forehand on forced errors, 17 overall compared to 15. Our next attempt at it, tournament a couple weeks later still in february does result in a win for us six four six four so this time at least we do make it out of the first round that's awfully close though uh, much cleaner from us 
Similar on the winners, fewer mistakes, this time being the difference. The round of 16, second round, is a good one. It goes three sets, it goes tiebreakers, but we lose. 6-1, 5-7, 6-7, to win so comfortably in the first set and then end up dropping in the end when your opponent has nine double faults and you have more winners. That's pretty sad. That is really sad. In the end, we still managed to win more than half the points, only just though. And we're out in the second round. And we've hit the World Cup for the first time, but it's not something that is going to be impacting me, as far as I can tell, as I think we are well outside of contention for the World Cup uh, as such a weak, weak manager. Total unknown. Being that I personally am such a poor manager, that's not going to happen anytime soon. However, we do have a talented youngster who has a future in the sport, which means at some stage, Clarice Thurman is going to find herself competing in the World Cup. And it does go all the way down to juniors, meaning that could be attainable in the not crazy distant future. The U.S. has the most win uh, winners, including just this last year, 2022. And meanwhile, in the current rankings, our fourth. I don't think she's going to be facing selection just yet. It's going to be a little ways off, but that could be a good growth period for, for Thurman in the not too distant future. Picking up a wild card, we enter a 100 level tournament, which is the third tier for the first time. Much better prize money. It's triple that of the lower tournaments. So just being here is going to provide us a better payday than what we've been getting. However, unlucky on the draw as we get the two seed in the first round, which means we're probably not going to be good enough to get out. But let's go ahead and play this match live. San Jose for this one, but San Jose, Costa Rica, not California. The opponent, 5-5 five and five on the season, an American. Just like Clarice, but much higher in the rankings. 18 years of age has definitely been playing longer. Outdoor for this one. Small stadium. Love that we get to see that. But very quickly, mistakes have been made, really, by both. And we already double fault. First game, and we've already double faulted. I really don't want to see that more than a couple times. All match. I like getting the ball in play and being active, being alive, waiting for them to make a mistake or getting them side to side enough to where they can't chase it down. Deuce. First game on the line and there's a nice winner to get the advantage. Bad serve there. The second serve just in. Nice one there, and we've got a game, so we're not going home empty-handed, but can we do more than just win a game? Definitely got caught out of position on that one and could not recover. Unforced error there. And we're in good shape on this second game as well. Oof, couldn't reach that one, though it was a fairly reachable ball. That was a perfectly placed ball, almost right into the corner itself. It was definitely on the baseline and very much towards the edge of the, uh, what do you call that, the valley? Oh, also perfectly on the line. Ooh, it was on the line. It was on the line. We let it go thinking it was out. I think that's something new that you didn't get in the AI logic in the past. I don't believe that that existed before. If I remember correctly, that's a big if, but if I remember correctly, the AI perfectly assessed ball location. If it was out, you didn't touch it, even though it was a quarter of an inch out. If it was in, we just double faulted our way into losing the game. And that very quickly became two games also. Not good. And giving away the the 
The double fault. Yeah, I think double faults are the most frustrating thing. Just get the ball in play. Game can't come to you if you can't get the ball in. 3-2, by the way, so we have actually bounced back rather quickly, winning two games on the trot, and for a second there, looked ahead. We have advantage, though. Chance to break, and we do. It's 4-2. With service. 30 all. 30, but now 40. down 30 40. Nice serve. Got the win. That's an ace, isn't it? Right? I mean, even if they touch it, if they don't, don't get it back over the net cleanly, is that considered an ace? I'm not sure it is. I think it's if you hit it and they don't touch it, is when it's an ace, right? It's just ultimately a winner. Anyway, it's five games to two. We're on the verge of winning this set. Maybe it's the the playing it live factor. Because I think the tactic does help. I think it 100% helps. As somebody who coaches a lot of sports, in fact, just, just last night had the district track meet at the end of the year. Uh, I'm head coach of the track team. Anyway, the that's that was the winner, was it not? It was six three. We've won the first set. Anyway, as someone who has done a, a lot of coaching, uh, fifteen years of uh, many 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 sports seasons, each and every one of those years. I mean, I'm I'm looking minimum uh, about seventy plus seasons under my belt as as a coach but anyway tactically staying alive staying in it playing clean balls avoiding the errors and being able to move about and just play the ball really really will get you going now it's not going to get you winning at the highest level but through the junior ranks, 100%, without a doubt. I've never coached this sport. I've never played much of this sport. I have played some racquetball. Uh, but I can tell you with total confidence that at lower levels, this is a very effective strategy. If you are agile, if you are quick, and you have a decent return, that's make another double fault and turn it into another game loss. Turning the serve down to a lower intensity level. She just. That's the one thing that's different to the on paper. When I'm controlling it, she has a lot of double faults. Too aggressive, too aggressive, and makes mistakes. It's okay to be aggressive on the first one and try to do something, but that second one, you've got to just get that ball in. And now we trail three games love here in this second set. And our love 30 in this decisive game. Second set is not looking good, folks. Nice. That's, that's the first good ball we've seen in a while. Mistake there sets us up. Advantage. Nice winner. There you go. Getting back in this, clawing our way back into this one. And off to a good start here in this game. Can we continue that momentum leading 30 all? We have, no, it's Deuce now. Advantage. Back to Deuce. Let's see these couple points slow down a little. Oh. Advantage. That looked like it was slicing out, but it hooked in. And then we make the mistake. Lose the game anyway. Nice winner to start the 
obvious must win game if we're going to have any chance in this set going down 5 1. There's no way we're going to win five in a row, four in a row. We do get that one, it's 4 2 now. But still in an almost must win scenario. It's not as bad at 5 2 as it is 5 1. Especially when you'll then have service, and it is that 5 2. We have service. Obviously, now every game's a must win, but it looks like we are headed for a third and decisive set in the near future. For now, we're still alive. It's Dusa. Advantage. And we do stay alive for another. And leading 1540. We make it 5-4. Again, staying alive. And with serve here, 30-15. And an ace. It's the first one we've seen. 40-15. And a winner, and it's 5-5. Five five. Ooh. Boy, that looked good from our angle. That was a nice ace. That was another case of that. Something you didn't see last year. I don't know if I ever totally finished that point, but something you didn't see last year. A ball on the edge, right? The, the AI perfectly judged whether it was in or out. Now they don't. There are times where you have very, very winnable balls that you think are out, and you avoid play. You don't hit it. You don't move for it. Nice one. Trailing 5-6 here. Must win game, obviously, to send it to the tiebreak. Oh, a little long there. Went from a strong position to a couple mistakes, and all of a sudden, game's in jeopardy. 40-30, though. Got the winner. Oh, we do get to the tiebreak. We do get to the tiebreak. Great comeback here from 4-1 down and win the first point of the tiebreak. For a girls 100 junior level, I don't know what the tiebreak two is. It's a seven. It's a seven. It should be a seven. Uh, the 30 level is a seven, so I'm assuming all or most junior levels are going to be similar. Oh, total unforced error. That ball had very little power on it. Double fault there. And it's 4-1! Huge payday for us in terms of what we're used to. If we can get out of this round, and we are on the verge. 5-2. Great one. Great winner there. Actually, it really wasn't that great of a ball. It's just better than what our opponent can handle. And that's, that's all you need right now for such a weak player. Wow. Great forehand to go back the other way. Totally unexpected. You'd think we'd come back across court. No. We go to that left hand edge and it's 6 3. It's match point. That's wide, though. 6 4. Simple serve. And they can't get the return in play. And we do get the winner. And we have made it to the second round of our biggest tournament as of yet. And do it in straight sets. Second round match has begun with an easier opponent. They're about 100 spots less in the rankings. So instead of being 200 spots below them in the rankings, we're only 100 spots below this time. 1530. We're going to take this one a lot faster, though. In fact, this first set, we're going to fly. Let's see what happens. First game's ours. Each one holds serve. Still holding serve. Two all, each holding serve. This time in jeopardy, but we do still manage to hold serve. Also now they're in jeopardy, but still holding serve. It's 4-3. Each one easily grabs their fourth game. Now we grab the fifth, and they grab the fifth. So we've gone through that first set. And the first upset in the entire set is when it's five all, and we lose it. But we get back to deuce here with the first set on the line. Ugh. That backhand goes well out. Oof, just got there. Couldn't get there. Put ourselves on the back foot, and we lose the first set. I was so balanced all the way and we were constantly leading since we served the first game and then right at the end right on the cusp we start to trail and then couldn't come through with the break when we needed it 
to get back level and extend it to a tiebreaker. All right, well, already trailing. This is gonna be our work cut out for us, so we're not gonna go quite as fast as we did through the first set, but let's take this a bit faster. I think these 100 level tournaments are still a bit over our head just now, but I'm more curious about what's gonna happen with the finances. Game of peace here in the second set. On the verge of being broke though. Love 40 and we do lose it without even scoring a point. How badly are we getting beaten at this point? 43% of the overall points won. Five aces but three double faults. Minus 11 on the winners. Plus three on the unforced errors, though. We are playing clean. We are playing our style. And total forced errors is 10 2. Read that situation, or it was down 3 1 and we pulled back a game there. But currently behind 4 2. And tra trailing Love 40 in that game. And we're on the cusp of exiting here in the second round. It's 2 5 now. Ooh. Wow. Great serve right on the line. And then it looked like it was going to be a really nice return down the line, but it catches the net and drops, and that's it. Out in the second round, but let's see what that payday is like. It's an increase for sure, but it's not a massive increase. It's not the kind of increase that's going to make a big dent on an 11 to 12K monthly deficit. 359. Replicate that times four. Again, we're still... You know, we're barely making one and a third K. It's nowhere near what we need. So we do have some serious financial issues that somehow need sorting in the near future. Otherwise, we're going to be in a whole heap of trouble. First update on how Clarice is doing in the overall sense. In terms of ranking, you can see we've earned a total of 11 points for the junior ranking so far. Getting to that round of 16 was five points. Getting to this round of 16 is one. So you can see how that kind of scales up. The quarterfinal here was worth five points. Overall, that currently has us at 368. You're four and four on the season so far with just over a thousand in prize money, which is obviously nowhere near enough. Four tournaments, 1.1. That's our average so far would be a month if we did all all four weeks at tournaments and didn't train so much to you know try to get better speaking of getting better though how much more progress have we made from where we left off i think that was about week five where we last saw we're now at week 11 and yeah we've picked up a little bit more couple tenths couple tenths is all uh, we're very very close to getting that surf power up to an eight uh, the lob is closing in on a five footwork is closing in balance leveled up this week focus and anticipation leveled up anticipation is definitely a good one to have for that reaction time despite the finances being a definite issue we are doing well in terms of the director's objectives that last one being moderate on their satisfaction behind the face cam there but everything else is looking good just not the finances you know if, if we had three thousand right now and had started at zero if we had that small positive balance i'd be feeling confident that hey at some point you have just enough money put away that you finally get an upgrade so you start slow it takes years okay fine but at the rate we're losing i'm just concerned at this point i'm concerned at this point uh, whether i've gone the wrong direction by letting the staff go the medical center it appears i went the right direction on that one anyway I don't know about the others without a comparison. And before I do the next episode, I'm definitely going to be running that experiment to find out and go from there. Uh, so when you tune in for the next episode, one major question will be answered, and it'll be answered in simple form. Either I will be at roughly February or March in a new playthrough, going the right direction, setting us up for success instead of failure with everything else mostly the same just having kept some staff around to, to provide the resources we need or 
we continue as is and hope that we survive in the long term uh, as we are losing money quite rapidly. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm the Cathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one, be safe out there, and bye for now.